Welcome back to Julie's Wreath Boutique. Let's make the perfect wreath for a housewarming or any time of year. I love the colors in it. I love the welcoming, inviting message that it has on the sign. And I just love how it turned out. So this is a wreath kit we put together with the wreath shop and you can get this from there. And I will have the description link for it down below. But listen, they sell out fast, so you're gonna wanna get it before they don't have it anymore. So let's get started. Okay, so the sound, the filming of this first clip didn't work. So I'm just gonna talk about the products. You can get these at the wreath shop. And um, this is a wreath kit and it's on sale. And there's one catch. At the end of this video, I add some greenery and Sarah did not send me greenery with this wreath kit. So if you want to add greenery, just know that you will need to purchase that separately. But this is a super fun wreath kit. So let's get started and make a beautiful wreath. Okay, it all starts with cutting with a wood burner. So if you can't see, there's a glass cutting board there. And this is the rotary map that I get from the reshop. I will leave a link for it in the description box below. But I am cutting these at 12 inches each. And we're going to cut about, I want to say 18 of each color. And that's what we'll need for this wreath. But it's pretty easy to do. Wood burner makes it so much easier. Okay, so you're gonna take the mesh that we cut at uh, 12 inches and you're just gonna slightly fold under the edges and we're gonna ruffle it. This is what I like to call my um, bow tie ruffle. It's not quite like the pancake, but it's rolling underneath the edges and it kind of gives the look of a bow tie. So the first one we're gonna put on our wreath form, we're gonna put it on bar three. So I always start from the left to the center of the wreath if that makes sense. In my head, it does. In my head, it does. <laughs> and then we're just going to alternate doing the same process for bar three. And now we're going to put this one on bar two. Do you see right there what I'm doing? And so basically what we're going to do is we're going to put three of the green, this is hunter green, and three of the gray in each section. And we're going to go back and forth from each bar. So start on bar three, go to bar two, go to bar three, and so forth. And then you're just gonna push your bow tie ruffles to the side to make sure you have enough room for it. So just keep doing the same step. It's pretty simple. Again, fold under your edges and then you're gonna ruffle and it's gonna look like a little bow tie. That's, that's all there is to it. So we are going to get our sign prepped for this project and I want to use my electric stapler. It's probably my new favorite tool that I have and you guys have really enjoyed it and you guys have purchased it, purchased it from my Amazon storefront and I appreciate that. That helps, guys, that helps pay for the products that I use in this video when you purchase from my um, storefront and I really appreciate it. So what I did to make it a little bit thicker um, the wood so that the staple would not go all the way through is I took some of these popsicle sticks that I get from Dollar Tree and I doubled them up and I stapled to the, them to the back of my sign. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some um, Chanel stems and we're going to sta um, staple those on the back of those popsicle steps, sticks, not steps, Julie, sticks. But this way, you will know that that staple won't go through all your signs. So if you have a wood sign, this is a great little trick to do and use. So I love it. And now our sign is ready, and I didn't use any glue on the back of it. So it's great for warm temperatures, too. You know, what's so good about voiceovers is I can show you how to do something quicker and faster. So I'm just going to speed this up. We're going to put the sign on our wreath, guys. We're just going to pull those um, 
oh, those Chanel stems through, and you know the drill here. You're just going to connect them on two different parts of your wreath. And um, if you feel like you need it a little bit higher, you can change the placement of the sign, add more Chanel stems if it, if it makes better sense for you. You could even do zip ties. So um, just do whatever you need to do to make this um, work for how you like to make wreaths, but this is the way I did it. I think I did add some zip ties at the end, um, but it's just really easy to do, and um, I hope you enjoy it. It's time to make a bow. So we're gonna get our Pro Bow the Hand out and I'm gonna show you this in fast time because this would take five minutes and I don't wanna spend five minutes. So we're gonna make um, these bow links and we are gonna go to the four inch line and we're just gonna make one bow with two loops on each side. You're gonna make start out with the tail. Now on this one, I forgot to put the, the ribbon spool on the bow maker and then I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot to do that. And then we're gonna do two loops on each of these with um, the, the four inch, and we're gonna cut it off. We're kind of doing a, somewhat of a terry bow. And then I'm gonna take the two inch hunter green ribbon here, and we are going to do just one loop on each side at the five or the four inch again. And then we're gonna do the same thing with our gray here, and we are just gonna do it one loop. You're gonna make at least two of these bundles, and you can add a third one if you want, but next we're gonna make a bigger bow. Okay, we're on the second bow. This is our main bow, and we are going to get a piece of wire. I needed something a little bit longer. You're gonna do about eight inches for a tail, and you're gonna start, we're gonna do six inch loops. So let's do at least four of these six inch loops. And it's so easy to do. You're gonna twist it though in the middle because we wanna make sure the right side of the ribbon is showing, but it's that easy. I love this. You can get this on Amazon. Um, I will have it linked below. So we're gonna make another tail there and I'm gonna put the tail to the upper right hand corner. I'm gonna get out my kind of plaid ribbon and we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna keep it the same lengths of, um, at six inches and we're going to do two on each side of this because this is really really pretty ribbon and i just feel like it really goes well with the sign on this wreath so once we get that done we are going to grab the green ribbon and we're going to cut a tail on this one as well we will just go ahead and get the green ribbon started but this time instead of doing the six inch we are going to do a five inch and we're going to do double loops on this side and just simply um, do another tail. Pretty easy. It's you, you can't mess this up, guys. This is where the bow makers really help. If you want to do one by hand, I'll leave my bow making um, videos that you can use your hands and, and do this as well. We're going to copy that um, same thing, but I think we did about four inches here. So we started at six, five, and then we're going to end at the four inch end, and we're going to do two loops. You can do two loops. You can do one loop on each side. It's really kind of up to you. And then at the end here, you're going to cut that, that length there. You're going to bring up the wire through the middle, cross it is what I like to do. And I like to push it down real good and then bring it over. And we're going to actually fluff this on the wreath itself. So since we have our sign at about the five o'clock mark, we're gonna put our biggest bow at the 11 o'clock. Um, you can do whatever you want. I just, this is what I did. So if you wanna change it around, if you want your your sign in the middle or, or up top, whatever you wanna do, have at it. So I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna start um, fluffing out this bow. Okay, so now we're gonna add our two little bundles, be actually before we fluff out that big bow. I know, I told you I'd fluff out the big bow and I didn't. We're gonna put this one around the seven o'clock mark and we're gonna put the second one um, over at the, let's say, mm, two o'clock mark? It's not really three, but two o'clock. And we're gonna just run it down through your wreath and um, twist it on the back and attach it that way. And then you're just gonna start fluffing out your bow. And you may need to, at this time, kind of trim out all of those um, ribbon strands that you have, the, the, 
the streamers or the tails. Yeah, that's what we're going to call them, tails. But you're just going to have a good time. I always like to dovetail mine. It's just a personal preference. It's not something that you have to do. But if you notice, I kind of like run my fingers through the end and I kind of run it um, to come in. This is where I'm, oh, no, I didn't mess up there. And one of these I messed up. <laughs> I cut it the wrong way, but I run my fingers kind of up and I, it gives it a little bit of a curl. I learned that from my friend, uh, Regina Sellers, and she just is the best and she's the inventor of the probe of the hand. So I love her products and that's why I use her products. So, um, once you get to this point, we are going to make, um, a few little ribbon bundles. Cause I was like, you know what? We're just not done yet. We need just a little bit more. So let's make some ribbon bundles. You're going to take only, I only took three and you can really choose whichever three. And if you want to add four, you can, but I took these and cut them at about nine inches each. And then I dove tailed them. So you're just going to fold them over and then you're going to cut a, a angular line to have that V shape. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack these on top of each other. And we've, we've done this in many videos and you've seen other um, wreath makers do the same thing, but it's pretty easy to do. The reason why I did only three of these is because when I stack them, so you're just going to lay them crisscross over the main ribbon, that black and beige ribbon, and take a little pipe cleaner or wire and twist it. And then you're just going to put as many of these as you want. I believe I did about four of them. Again, put them wherever you feel like your wreath needs a little bit of an accent color. Um, you're going to have plenty of ribbon for this because these ribbon rolls come in 10 yards. So um, when you get a wreath kit like this, and for some reason I was having some difficulty there, but when you get a wreath kit like this, you're getting 10 yard ribbon rolls. So you're going to have ribbon left over, which is always a super, super plus for any project. So um, just make sure you don't pull this down too far, but it'll look beautiful. So once you get that done, that is what comes with the wreath kit. Now, I just decided because you see that little wreath on our sign there, I just felt like we needed a little bit more. So I have these little bushes that I either got from Hobby Lobby or Walmart, but I know Sarah has some very comparable things and I know that we'll try to get a link for you. But you're just gonna put a little bit of hot glue on there. Again, I get my glue gun at um, on Amazon, uh, Surebonder, and I love it. Um, you can even find them at, I've seen them at Hobby Lobby too. I'm not sure if Michael's has them and I'm not sure if Joanne's, but I just felt like this wreath needed this little touch. So I'm adding it again. This is not in the wreath kit. So you will need to purchase this separately. But again, if you want to make this wreath, guys, it's going to sell out soon. So go over to the wreath shop and make sure to grab one. Now, if you watch this video all the way through, would you please um, write in the comments welcome home. This is a great wreath for some sort of like um, housewarming gift, but I just kind of feel like this wreath will look good any time of year too. It's just just a very welcoming wreath and I just love the colors in it and I hope that you really enjoyed it too. It was so much fun to make. So make sure to go over to the wreath shop. I will leave my um, link for the um, actual kit down below in the description box and in the comments for you. But I love this and I hope you loved it. And it was so much fun to make. I will leave a slide of both of the reads together at the end so you can see it. But if you enjoyed it, make sure you leave me a welcome home comment in the comments. And we will see you next Sunday night because next Sunday night we're going to be talking all about fall. So this is the difference. On the left side, you have no greenery, and on the right side, you have greenery. So it's really going to be up to you what you want to do, but make sure you subscribe. Make sure you come back next week on Sunday evening, and we will have a new craft project for you. And here's a hint. It's going to be all about fall, and I can't wait to show you. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.